Hello, and welcome to Piano Tech Radio Hour, the weekly bridge to the future of the Piano Tech community. I'm David Anderson. And I'm Ethan Janney. And we're here to ask great questions, and then we'll shut up and listen to some of the authorities, experts, and most outstanding personalities in our little world of pianos. So, put on your best set of headphones, and let's get started. Hey everyone, great to see you. Welcome back to Piano Tech Radio Hour once again. Gotta get my speaker on properly here. Okay, so looks like we're rolling in bit by bit. I am, uh, I'm actually streaming into you from Puerto Rico today, doing a little bit of traveling, so, um, exciting and we'll just let a few more people enter so today um, we don't have a guest for today but I thought what we would do is kind of open things up for conversation check in with everybody see how they're doing and and uh, we're in an interesting state right now moving most folks are moving out of the pandemic I suppose and um, trying to return to a sense of normalcy and so interested to hear how that's all going for you all if, if things are getting better business-wise or um, or anything like that so i'll give a quick introduction now to the event for those watching on facebook and youtube and then we'll we'll get started let me pull that up so uh, again, this is Piano Tech Radio Hour being brought to you by Piano Technicians Masterclasses, an online educational resource that offers you cutting edge instruction from piano industry masters without leaving your home. You can find out more at www.pianotechniciansmasterclass.com. And we're putting together a really cool conference convention coming up in September. It's going to be three days of piano tech content. Um, I believe we have the 2nd, the 10th, and the 17th of September. That's a Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday of subsequent weeks. Uh, we surveyed you, the potential participants, and you all like that idea. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, we're flexible because we're doing things online, so why try to force everything into just a few days? And uh, what, I, what I haven't made too big a deal of is the other parts of the, the convention. So it will not be going on simultaneously, but it's going around, on around the same time so that we can try to integrate different things going on. So after the day after the first day of the convention, we'll have a day for piano teachers and we'll be doing content for piano teachers. And then the day after the second day of, the, of our piano tech convention, There'll be a day for piano players. And then finally, the day after the last day of this convention, there'll be a day for the general piano industry. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of using this opportunity to just bring a bunch of people with similar interests together, um, try to facilitate ways in which you all can connect with folks that you might find useful that are a little bit outside of our domain, be it piano teachers, players, or just general industry. Uh, professionals, brands, and things like that, and uh, and vice versa. If we can connect uh, with some teachers and help them understand a little bit better, you know, how to look for a piano, how to think about their piano, how to um, you know teach their piano students um, how to understand pianos better. So I'm looking forward to everything. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty fun. Um, I'd love to kind of single out a couple of folks and just say hi, if maybe allow folks to unmute. I believe you have the capacity to unmute. I'm looking at um, my good friend, Carl Lieberman here. I'm wondering if you're up for uh, chatting a little bit. You wanna unmute yourself? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm always up to chat. <laughs> great, great. Are you, uh, are you, what's, what's going on in your life? I, 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 I don't want to make it a huge public thing necessarily, but I feel like, are, is your health okay? Are you doing okay right well, now? Well, my, my health is okay, but I'm in the midst of having a pro prostate crisis, which is a, a, 
you know, I don't know how it's going to resolve, but but basically I'm okay right now. Okay. And uh, in terms of work, you know, uh, I'm just working. The, the uh, a big a big commitment for me uh, is Princess Cruises. I take care of all of their ships, and I have for quite some time. And so I've started to go back taking ships that haven't been, no one's seen the piano for 16 months. And I'm bringing them up to pitch and doing a couple of hours of maintenance on each of the pianos, shaping the hammers, you know, basic maintenance, which they never get. So I've been doing that on a couple of ships. And uh, in September, a couple of ships are gonna begin regularly in Los Angeles. So I'll start to do the cruise ships. The uh, concert hall where I work, has been completely closed, but they're having their first two concert events. We're having Chucho Valdez, the Cuban pianist in oh, October. Wow. So awesome. we're slowly going to begin our concert schedule again. And the uh, I work at, at a theater that does the Broadway shows and, and Hamilton is beginning in, in August. So I'll be going in to do that. So some of the things that, are, that I haven't done for 16 months, I'm gonna to begin to do. I've always had, my regular private clients, but you know, I'm only really doing two or three or four private jobs a week, which is actually just suits me fine. I'm completely happy. I'm not soliciting any new work. At this point, whatever comes in, comes in. Uh, the recording studios, the two recording studios, three recording studios where I work have been online for uh, almost a year now. So I'm still going into doing those. And so basically I'm working uh, 15 hours a week. And you know what? <laughs> That's just fine. I like to keep my finger in it. And uh, I don't really want to take on any significant new jobs or anything like that. I'm kind of winding down, but happy to be at work. Good. Yeah, that sounds like a, like a, a leisurely but profitable lifestyle that you've got going on there. When it, when it comes down to the cruise ships and the kind of filing the hammers and getting some of that work done is that something where you've just built a relationship with them to the point where you well, just say i'm going to file the hammers or... cruises for 49 years and and princess cruises is uh, owned by carnival so i also am doing some work for holland america line on mm -hmm. and their first ship going into is new amsterdam and holland america has set up a, a thing with uh, lincoln center in new york they've got mm -hmm. a room where they have a, a brand new hamburg steinway and they do classical concerts. And so, I, you know, on, on the Holland America, I just, you know, the thing about cruise ships, it's profitable from the technician's point of view. You do these pianos every two weeks. Once you've got them settled down, there's very little that needs to be done other than broken strings and stuff. But you don't really do regular maintenance. You're always in a rush. There are, there are uh, patrons, you know, in the rooms where you're working, the last thing they want to do is hear you tuning the piano. So, you know, I can, once I've got the pianos stable at pitch, it's 15 minute tunings on, on, on four, five, six pianos each time I'm on the ship. But in terms of taking the time to pull the action, shape the hammers, you know, uh, yeah, make, make, even up the aftertouch, make sure the pedals are working optimally, you know, clean, clean everything really thoroughly, the basic sort of maintenance, they never get that work. And so what's nice is as the ships are coming back online, ship by ship, they're paying me, you know, to take two days for each ship and go down and, and hit the four or five most important pianos and kind of do a, a, a solid uh, two or three hour maintenance on them. And, uh, you know, so it, it, this is this is a good thing to do and it'll pay dividends because, you know, Princess, for instance, has a regular guy in Alaska, a regular guy in, in Florida and me in Los Angeles. And we do ver almost all of their work and all of us are, are, are on top of it. I also see ships that are coming from around the world that they were last serviced in uh, Valparaiso, Chile, or they were last serviced in God knows where. And you know, these, these ships get whatever service they get. And you know, cause the, the port agent generally hires the piano technician and the port agent is getting someone who's the cheapest person. And so they get God awful service in a lot of places. Princess is very good. They have uh, pianists actually in the, 
in the positions in the entertainment department that, that manage me and manage my colleagues. And so they know when they're getting decent work. And so, but they have three core guys who take care of all of their pianos. So I have a long-term relationship with them. And basically, if there's something I say needs to be done, then it gets done. And the same of my two colleagues. Uh, you know, a lot of the cruise ships, you know, are, are you, you know, people who work on cruise ships can speak up on this. But, you know, they're kind of intermittent. They show up in port, someone calls you, and they offer you uh, $240 to tune two pianos, you know, and they're looking okay. for a very, very low wage right. work. Right. And that's right. typically the way the cruise ship industry works. I'm kind of lucky in that I have a long term relationship with celebrity princess in Holland, America. And, and basically, they're not price sensitive. They're happy to pay top dollar. They just want me to show up and, and do what I say I'm going to do. Uh, you mentioned something earlier that that uh, patrons are kind of coming in and out of the rooms. Do they have pianos in private rooms? On, on those ships at well, all, or are they I'm, mostly just I'm, in public I'm spaces? A celebrity in the, the highest valued suite, wow. they have a uh, Yamaha Grand or a Kauai Grand. And so, uh, you know, that's not something, uh, A, uh, a I, I very rarely see celebrity or RCCL ships in Los Angeles. They, they've withdrawn from Mexico. And so I see uh, a celebrity ship once or twice a year. And so if I'm doing all the pianos, I might go up into the suite and do a, do a quick one over on the suite piano. But normally, you know, you've got the, the, the two stage rooms and you've got the, the lobby and you've got the bar. Those four pianos right. are the core pianos and you want to make sure that you give them the time required. One of the things that comes up on these, they have disc claviers on them. And, uh, you know, if people don't know what they're doing and they never service the pedals, then what happens is the pedals overheat, the solenoid overheats, and then they shut down. Mm -hmm. So you need to do a, a legitimate pedal adjustment on them so that you're within the red-green lights on, and, and, they, and the solenoids don't overheat. That's the main issue I see on, on those pianos. You know, it's, you, you're not doing concert work on these things. You're doing good, solid piano work making them playable, keeping them solidly in tune and pitch. And me personally, because I do the cruise ships now for years, I have complete sets of Yamaha bass strings from C1s to C7s. And so when I when a ship comes in and they have a broken bass string, I've always got the string with me. And uh, that that's sort of required for this type of work. You right, know, because you're in and out. The, the yeah, ship's you leaving. Can't order it and then do it. So, you know, I keep my sets current and, uh, you know, that, that's sort of how I handle that. I don't know if, did I ever tell you I played on a cruise ship for a summer? No. What, what ship? Uh, Carnival. Yeah. Okay. Carnival the the lowest line. end of the low end. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I just remember I was in music school and there was this, you know, a couple of guys that were also music school say, Hey, there's this, you know, there's this guy named Leo, you know, and reach out to him and he's looking for musicians and you do an audition. And if you get in, then they put you on a ship. And I think he did for multiple lines, but, um, I mean, pretty sweet deal playing music on a cruise ship. You're kind of on, on the top of the ladder there in terms of people. It, well, it is, I, but see, Usually, that's you, you were probably a guest entertainer, and so you had a short term contract. You know, most yeah. of the guys, this is their regular gig, they're on for four months, they're off for two months, they're on for four months, they're off for two months. And, uh, you know, there, there's kind of, um, you know, everyone's always checking on them. You know, you've got you play four sets every day, and you've got to make sure you're there on time, and, and all this sort of thing. But, which but is hard for musicians to be on time, yeah. Yeah, well, these are these are pros. The people who play on these ships are, are pros. They're, they're, a lot of them are, are from Europe, you know, from el from elsewhere, and this is a regular gig for them. And so it's it's like guys who play in restaurants, and they have a regular gig every Friday, Friday and Saturday night. They play they play at Antonio's. This is this type of thing, you know. They play on the cruise ships, and and they're you know they're serious professional musicians. They're good. 
Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And they've got. I remember when on the ship that I was on, there was a, a Filipino band. Like they would call them, oh, the Filipino band, and they could do uh, Beatles covers. Like they were the Beatles, you know. And they're like, wait a second, what are these Filipino guys that are singing the Beatles? It sounds like the Beatles. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, they get they get really solid musicians on those. Uh, it's it, the the nice thing about the gig for a musician, especially if you're kind of studying. Uh, you get time to practice, and you know you, you only have to play during the performance hours, and maybe there'd be a rehearsal here and there. But uh, yeah. Well, I, that's I another just. I see, there's usually one piano. Frequently, it's in the chapel. Um, sometimes it's in the crew bar, but frequently in the chapel. Uh, that is never played, but that's where the musicians go to rehearse. And uh, so, uh, you know, and, and practice, not rehearse, practice. They, these guys practice. And, and uh, the musicians may pull me aside and say, listen, can you get to the, the, the chapel piano? And, and uh, of course you'll say yes. You know, you want to be on good terms with the, the band master, the production master, you know, the guys who are nominally your supervisors. You know, I report directly to the entertainment staff in the home office, but their eyes and ears on the ground are the bandmasters and the production coordinators. And so you want to establish relationships with them. You want to check in and make sure that, uh, you know, if there's anything that's on their mind, you've attended to it. You know, I encourage yeah, any sense. of the pianists, if there's a note that's bothering them, if there's anything, please just leave me a note. And usually they will, because you want to make sure you take care of what's on their mind. You know, I, I'm really fast. I'm flying through each of these pianos and, and I may miss something. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's different than. Uh, yeah, it remind you know, it reminds me that there's sort of these different types of gigs where you have this regular maintenance thing going on. There's the cruise ships, you know, there's there's performance halls or something like that. There's universities. Um, but like a university, I, I feel like it's a little bit, I have for some reason a little bit harder. Maybe there's just some, some kids that get in out of the, the rooms that aren't music majors or whatever, or, or kids haven't learned, you know, how to be fully responsible yet. But I feel like, uh, on a ship like that, like you said, there's a professional musicians and they'll communicate with you pretty well, probably about, uh, what's going on and make sure that you're working as a team. So that's pretty cool. I want to, uh, let's see if anybody else wants to check in. Where uh, did, oh, Dave, there you are, Dave Skolnick. You want to say hi, Dave? Oh, oh, hey, me? What? Me? <laughs> well, hi. No, I, um, you didn't, uh, you didn't warn me. I would have worn different shoes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, um, I, I don't know, really. I mean, I'm, I'm just so used to listening to all you guys that uh, it's not like You're I have. You're on the spot, man. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I can think about it and you can come back to me. It's um, <laughs> I, No, actually, to, to be honest, uh, uh, lately, most of what's been consuming my attention, believe it or not, is this upcoming uh, guild. Um, oh, yeah. Convention and all the. The issues surrounding that which is not something we don't I, I don't think we ever talk about that here and um if truth be known it's uh something that i've wanted to talk to you and carl about at some length though no, i never imagined this would be the um you know entirely appropriate venue to do that but um maybe it, i could just drop it as a thought to follow up that with all everything you've been doing you know, it's, I don't know, is it two years now or more that you've been Since doing these? I think I started in 2017, 18, 19, No, but not the radio hours. Four years. The radio hours just been since last March, I think, March or Right, radio yeah. hours, but, but prior to that, the actual, your on-site. The master classes, yeah. yeah. So you've been at this now for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe, maybe you actually, the two of you can address this. Uh, this is me being spontaneous, um, hey, but why not? Uh, what you might envision as a interaction, interfacing or uh, uh, between the direction that you've been uh, really refining and how it relates to some of the things uh, the Guild has been doing and is, is trying to do. And if, in fact, you are aware of um, 
what the overlap might be between your work here and the people who um, visit here and the guild because they're not it's not completely um uh you know, what would be con congruent it's not mm -hmm. it, it's it's not all the same so i mean I it's know. not like the same people that are yeah, like constructed yeah and i don't even know what the percentage might be of the uh, people who come here regularly that are uh, uh you know involved with the guild and how much right. how who's never heard of it or who has absolutely sworn never to uh, engage with it so there are those yeah <laughs> there was there's one, <laughs> <It's> one. <laughs> so i yeah i'd be happy to hear you know you if you want to go want, first if, ethan or, or can i uh go you've got something to say chime, go ahead and chime in carl well one of the things i've tried to connect ethan to our executive committee. And I, I, you know, I'm of the opinion that a lot of, some of what we're doing in the guild is we're overreaching. We're trying to create too many things. And it would be great if we partnered with existing institutions in a way that was mutually beneficial. So I've tried to connect Ethan to Mark and Jim and the leadership and find out where we can have gift discount programs or simple things that we can do to make, uh, to scratch each other's back. You know, we're competitors and we're also colleagues. And I, I think there's a way to do it amicably and in a way that is mutually beneficial. But, you know, not a lot has come of it. We've had some very nascent um, kind of discount programs and I don't think we've gone much farther than that. But I've kind of tried to connect the two sides. Yes, I think that's really great too. That's been that's been cool that you uh, put some effort into doing that. Yeah, I mean, I'm in touch with um, Sean Bruce from yes. the Guild, and he's 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 been. It's very helpful to be in touch with him um, because he's right. He's on the ground, you know, and he does a lot of organization for the convention, and you know, he's. He's kind of familiar with a similar process to what I do, what I'm doing over here, but just sort of like the uh, analog version, um, I suppose, um, organizing conventions and managing them and getting sponsors and, you know, promoting and all this stuff. Um, so I don't know, we, we were just meeting a, a week or week ago or something like that, talking about the upcoming uh, conventions, both of them, the one that the PTG is doing, as well as the one that I'm putting together. I mean, I think that um, I think it's a matter of just kind of continue to try to feel it out. Um, I think the PTG is trying to figure out where its forte is, I suppose. Um, like maybe Carl, you were saying maybe there's too many things they're trying to do. I don't know that for certain, but that it's kind of like what um, what could be the focus. Um, and I think I think I've heard some uh, talk of just kind of being that repository of, of information could be one of those things um, or like some sort of an archive, uh, you know, a place where people can go and find information. I mean, that's definitely there. I mean, I've always found the testing and quali qualification procedures, although, you know, there's, I'll acknowledge there's people that, you know, probably should be sort of recognized at a higher level within the guild that wouldn't necessarily take or pass some of those tests. But I think that it's great that those are there. Um, and there's like a standard, right? Because uh, I don't know, there's not really much beyond those tests in our industry as a standard of, you know, you know, adequacy and professionalism. And I think that that's definitely a strong, a strong point that the guild has going. Um, Ethan, can I, can I just yeah. interject one thing? Because I, I definitely did not intend, I mean, if anybody uh, else had I picked on you, so whatever you have to yeah, say. Yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> this is your fault. <laughs> but in fact, I would love to have a chance to, you know, talk to you and Carl, you know, at greater length. I, my, my sense, if I can just encapsulate it in the two directions, and I guess in honor of David, and I'll say this, you know, probably till I die, uh, almost every time it comes up, there's this question of duality. And he taught it to me, I've taught it to my daughter. And, you know, it's here presents here, there's a, a focus and something that you've a direction that you've been going in and refining. 
that's very much more in touch with, you know, modern ways of communicating. And it feels like, I, and you also have a presence, uh, you know, on the on the Guild website. There is a link to what you're doing here. Um, at some point, I, I, what I think any of the people here would probably, if they had to uh, articulate it, what they would want to steer clear of if this is the way they perceive the organization is the, the level of politics, which is, I don't, I don't frame it as a negative, but it's part of any organization. And it's not the part that most people, you know, decide I'm going to join uh, this organization so I can get into the politics of it. So what I imagine is some way, even though you've tried and Carl has tried initially, I see, I, I envision something that is going to be able to at least incorporate the model that you're creating and almost uh, a symbiosis in a way as the, the organization tries to come into the, um, the 19th or 20th century. Um, uh, if there is some kind of coordinating uh, that could happen because you're ultimately, you're defining what you're trying to do. They're having to redefine what it is they want to do. And I'm just, I mean, if the more discussions, even conceptually that can happen, um, you know, and you know, you have two, you have your, you, I, say, I say your, if I end up going, it's going to be our uh, convention, the one that, it is happening here, right? Really following up on the their their event, and so while there there there's no linkage per se, it seems like there might be some possibility of of a kind of interconnectedness and a continuity that mm, right. you know, looking forward you might look into. So um, yeah, that could be cool. I can't tell you how happy I am that you called on me. <laughs> okay. And, okay. To, and, and give credit to um, Carl's shirt, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, it, it, just to clarify, when you say the concept of duality, can you say, speak a little bit more about what that... Uh, oh, my God, no. No? Uh, well, it's too complicated? Uh, well, <laughs> this I This is cannot... one of those times that we missed David. Uh, yes, <laughs> I, I, I should have... I, I don't think I've ever heard. I don't think I've ever heard him wax uh, philosophical well, on duality. I'll, I'll give you just the, the head up was that years ago when David came and did a, a day session with the uh, New York City chapter, he did a session with us down at. Um, uh, well, no, 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 no. Uh, he was there more recently, I think. Cunningham uh, in Philadelphia. No, yeah. this was years ago when he came to the Yamaha Center on Fifth Avenue. And he spent a day with the, you know, the chapter plus, and um, I may end up writing, trying to write this up for something, but he, uh, I got there a little bit late. And my first impression uh, walking in and listening to him was, you know, like, listen, who is this salesman? Um, it was my first impression was not, not altogether positive. Uh, and, you know, I felt, okay, I'm glad I'm sitting in the back in case I don't want to hang out. <laughs> uh, but throughout, I mean, he is, he was exactly what everyone knows him, you know, to have been and he just, you know, completely authentic. But at that point, uh, you know, this concept of duality was maybe more present and current in his way of uh, worldview. But just the idea of being able to hold, I mean, what duality is holding opposing Okay. views uh, concurrently and it's it. amazing it's amazing just how uh, necessary uh, that ability is to navigate the world I think right. that's my oh you just muted yourself David on purpose I don't know I thought that the background noise was coming from my house so I, I no I just... you're good you're okay good. Uh, yeah so there there that's um the only other thing I'll, I'll mention, just to bring it back to Carl's initial thing, there was I, my experience years ago, um, uh, not to the extent that he was doing, but I did, uh, there were Chandra's cruise line was a line that sailed, you know, more on the East Coast, New York, and then down to uh, the Bahamas and Florida. 
Um, so I had a couple of years where but that was my cruise line experience, which um, wasn't, I doesn't seem to have been as elegant as, as Carl's, but it was nevertheless, you know, just the experience was still something that um, was worthwhile, uh, you know, being on those ships for an hour. Some of them I had to be on, on dry dock while they were refitting. Um, I learned how to tighten the chuck on a hand drill uh, by hand from one of the, uh, the guys who was working in the ship at the time. Uh, it was uh, the only other thing, Carl, that maybe you could refer back to is I noticed what I noticed on the ships that I was on was there always a very, very distinct hierarchy uh, to the different roles of the crew and always related to certain um, nationalities. Absolutely. It's a class structure. It con you know, Princess comes from uh, P&O. And, and live, you know, I've, I've been on cruises where I was like, let's say, replacing a set of base strings. And, and you, when you stay in the crew quarters, they have people listed by nationality. And, you know, the lower end are the Filipinos. And, and you know, then you have the Italians and, and then you have the English. It's an absolute class structure. And, you know, if you've ever been on any of the old canard ships, you know, they actually had first class and second class. And the two class areas had separate doorways. They didn't connect to each other. So, you know, the, the cruise ships are really a connection to a bygone era. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with that. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, there's, it's, it's, uh, it, there's global and, and country related, but also just sort of like position related things, you know, as well. Like what's your job and, and where do you sit on the packing order? Um, I'll share this uh, image uh, as so, so I I get what you're talking about the dualism and the way that it's been I most recently came across that idea that you explained is called uh, as called being called holding paradox being able to hold paradox right and the example that uh, that was given to me is when you look at this cube right um, it says this this angle is 90 degrees. OK, well, we can all be like, oh, yeah, sh sure. That that's that says that's 90 degrees. But then when you look at this one, uh, if 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 you actually measure this angle as it's as it's drawn on the paper, that's not a 90 degree angle. Right. And if you were to measure this one, that's not a 90 degree angle either. And so but we all know that in a three dimensional world, this image makes sense. Right. And it's kind of like uh, and an analogy for being able to hold paradox and two things that don't seem to go together that like this, that this could be a 90 degree angle and also not be a 90 degree angle at the same time. And the, the analogy is if you can hold those two things together, you it's almost like being able to open another dimension of awareness, right? Um, just like you would if you actually were able to understand the three dimensionality of a cube once having Kind of tried to understand it on a piece of paper so uh, but yeah i love that idea that makes a lot of sense um it's not a it's not a uh a ubiquitous skill to be able to to hold paradox or or, or duality like that but definitely appreciate it um i always enjoy i'm just kind of picking on people but i don't know if oh wait actually we got some comments in here let's see here can did it did it how does carl settle a new base string if a ship is leaving the I'm, next I'm day i'm answering that I, I could say that out loud if you want oh yeah sure sure well yeah you know so what i do i you know i and and i should say that the gold standard in this is jim arledge he's written about this and nobody knows more about this than him uh, um but what i do is i put the string in and i pull it up 25 cents and then i put my thumb on a rubber wedge and you know, push the string down until it's down to about zero. And then I take the string and I pull it to about 15 cents sharp, and then I mute it off, okay? And the, the issue, I'm, I'm a big believer in muted, re muting replaced strings. Do you want the note to be loud and out of tune or soft and in tune? And the answer is soft and in tune. So if it's one string out of two, it's soft, but it doesn't sound bad. You can't, 
And then, you know, since I'm going to see the piano again in two weeks, that 15 cent sharp will have will have settled to about right. OK, and then what I'll do is I'll press on the string again with with the rubber wedge and tune it and I'll press on it and tune it and I'll leave it maybe a cent sharp and then it's going to be stable pretty much from that point on. Cool. Yeah, that sounds like a great plan. Um, what about single strings? Sing, the single strings, you're, you, ha you can't mute it. And so I, I do I do the, the 25 cent, push it down to zero, but I only leave the string maybe five cents sharp, eight cents sharp. You know, on single strings, you've got a lot of, you know, in the PTG tuning exam, there's a plus or minus six cent window on getting that string, getting credit for the tuning on that string. So if a string is six cents sharp or a string is six cents flat, I mean, it's not in tune, but it's in the ballpark. And so, you know, if you leave it six cents sharp and by the time you come back to it, it's only six cents flat, no one probably noticed it during those intervening two weeks. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Alan, I, I know you were the one that asked the question. I, I also enjoy speaking with you sometimes, if you don't mean, mind me picking on you. Did you uh, have anything What's on your mind these days? You look like you're, you're working on unmuting. I'm talking to you. <laughs> talking to you. What's on my mind these days? Uh, our good brother yeah. David Anderson. I mean, I was at a restaurant the other day. They had artisanal bread, and I see that word and I think of David, right? <laughs> and then so many other times, so many other situations. So he, he's been front and center on my mind lately. Uh, and I've been working on pianos, and now that Things are loosening up as we head in the right direction with the pandemic. Richard Davenport is able to come out to CalArts as he was doing one day a week before the pandemic. It's great to have him there and uh, he enjoys being there. So that's really cool. And he's going to be doing some other teaching uh, in the near future in some other situations. So I'm glad for that because he's definitely one of our living masters. And uh, David, <laughs> to get back to David Anderson, I think it's a compliment. I'm not sure, but it's true. One thing he once said to me is, Alan, what I love about you is talk to you for five minutes when we're talking about death. So I bring this up now because <laughs> he's no longer with us and I feel he's like more present in my life than ever before. And I think it's because I've been thinking about death so much in my life and that's another story why that is. But uh, with Richard and with our other elder statesmen and with anyone really, we don't know how much time we have or how much time they have so it's just a reminder to understand how precious life is, to make the most of it, you know, to tell the people we love that we love them and that we appreciate them. And as many people have pointed out, David lived a life of gratitude. And that's one of the many ways in which he's a, a wonderful role model for me. Sometimes I'm grateful, sometimes I'm ornery and ornery is okay as long as it doesn't supersede the gratitude. Mm, yeah. That's what's on my mind. Yeah, he, that was, that was his daily uh, mantra. I don't think you could. Yeah, there were times. I mean, there were times here and there. I think, yes, when when he was battling the cancer, where you know, probably you could tell it was a little bit more struggle for him to say that he was grateful for that day, or you know, for what was going on. But he he typically did, he, he, even despite you know, it was kind of. Uh, it just real. It really made me think about my own, any of my own issues. Okay, so this guy's grateful, you know. Okay. <laughs> you know, I I, I I actually saw David the day before he died. I went Did over you? To that's that's house, great. And he was he was not very communicative, but uh, you know, and but Tanya and and the whole family were great. He had a lot of people around him, and um, you know, I just basically touched him, you know, held him and touched him. And I, I talked and, you know, he didn't respond much, but I told him that uh, there's been an outpouring of affection for him. And, uh, people contributed to his GoFundMe and all this thing. And he actually, his eyes fluttered. And there, I, I thought I saw like a little smile on his face and he said, tell me all about it. So even at the end, he, he, he wanted to read his press releases, you know, but, but he was, <laughs> no, but he knew, I think he had an inkling 
of how appreciated he is. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty positive of that. Uh, I got to, I got to talk to Tanya uh, maybe a week ago or something like that, and one thing that she shared with me that she would like to share more widely is that uh, um, D David would write poems. Apparently, he's a, he's a bit of a poet, and he would write poems. And they had a date night. Uh, for those of you that don't know Tanya, she's you know, a perfect match for Dave, <laughs> you know, a sculpturist and, you know, kind of like a fiery personality. Um, and uh, anyways, they had this thing where they did a date night like once a week without fail for, I, I don't know, probably for decades or something like that. And uh, I think as part of that, sometimes he would, sometimes or always, I don't know, he would write like little notes, and you know, poems and things like that. Um, but she was kind of going through them, and, uh, and and she read some to me, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this is a, these are incredible, you know." And she said, "These are not, these are not just for me, you know. These are for anybody, you know. These are for other people should should hear these. Other other people should um, get a chance to um, check these out. So hopefully there'll be some way uh, that, that that those can be shared a little bit more wild, widely because he he had some really great." Um, poems that he wrote and hey, Ethan, yeah I, I was just thinking I sorry for interrupting but oh no uh, no problem you, you got my mind going you know what would be great would be one of these programs dedicated to David uh, oh for sure David Anderson's greatest hits highlights of David Anderson on piano tech radio hour right. uh, so many wonderful moments one after another I know it takes time to put those things together but right. he deserves it Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I and I mentioned that to Tanya. I think they're going to be doing something. Do you guys know what date they're going to do something at their house? They're going to do something sometime coming up in the next. I don't know. It's going to be. I, I don't think it's within the month or whatever. It's going to be a little bit. But um, but yeah, I, I told her I would I would like to do something like that. And whether it's during this program or outside of it, um, just kind of taking some time to to pay tribute. Um, he also had these, she, she sent me, I, I don't know if I'll be able to pull it up quickly, but she sent me his music, you know, cause he, he was, uh, you know, he was on track to be, you know, a superstar, a rock star, basically, you know, <laughs> he, uh, he had, uh, Clive Davis, uh, who was like a, a famous A&R guy, uh, that, that signed a bunch of hot, hot musicians was, uh, working with David for a time there. Um, and uh, she shared some of the tracks that that he put together on his album. I, I wish I, I, I am not prepared for this, but maybe some, maybe one of these in the, in the future, I'll play through some of David's music. Cause you're gonna be like, whoa, holy cow. <laughs> um, he played some really incredible rock music. Yeah, I, you know, I, maybe I can put a link. I can hear audio. Is, is somebody trying to talk? Uh, well, I was going to say, I, I have a copy of his album and, and of one of his songs, Life's Too Short, where he plays lead guitar, wrote the song, and is the lead singer. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll try to get a link so I can post it up. I, it's in iTunes, so it's, I don't know how I'll get it into your uh, thing, but I'll work on that. It's okay. really a kick-ass song. You know, we know him as this mild-mannered guy. He was like a shit-kicking guitar player, so, you know, singer, you know, in his earlier days. Right, right. I'll, um, yeah, yeah. So so his wife, somebody asked in the chat here what his wife's name. Her name is Tanya Regeer. And, I mean, she's, you know, some people, uh, no, no offense to them, you know, make, you know, art, you know, for, for, for fun or just for enrichment. Yeah, you know, she's a serious, um, professional artist, uh, who does incredible work basically full time. I think that's, you know, how she makes her living, which is, she has, she has, she has pieces in museums. She's like a real sculptor, like think, you know, Michelangelo and someone you know, really sculpting. She's a sculptor. Yeah, I'll do a screen share real quick. We can check some of that out. We're going off the rails a little bit, but 
today, but I think it's okay. Yeah, so she does a lot of um, beautiful images of the human form a lot. That's mainly the theme of her work. Um, there's there's a lot of this kind of stuff hanging in, in their house too, which is pretty cool. And in their yard as well. But that looks like it's a, a slideshow. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's incredible. And uh, she, so it's kind of cool because at their at their home, you have David has this kind of workshop area. It, it's, it looks more like a display area for the pianos, but he does have some workshop materials in there. That last one was in their yard, I think. The one that, that was an outdoor one. Um, and uh, and then right next to that shop where he has his pianos, he's got like three three or four pianos, grand pianos sort of on display for people to come by and check them out. Then that's her sculptural shop is right next door on their property. They've got a really incredible property um, where they get to do all this stuff. So yeah, I'll uh, hopefully on a future one, maybe next week I'll share, share some of David's music uh, as a, as a fun, as a fun moment, but it's a serious rock and roll. <laughs> um, sure. I might do something just kind of simple here. Yeah. Uh, do you have it on iTunes? No, I, have or something? It. I, 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 I just may just like play it here. Here it is. Just so you, yeah. you'll hear you it. You have to share, time. share your computer audio here. Let me make you a co-host and then how, how do I share my audio here? If you go to share screen, um, okay. and then at it, on advanced is a tab at the top. There's basic advanced files. Okay. Let me let it, me get it playing here, and then you can screen. actually. Uh, There's a tab. I would. For, I would pause it and wait to play. Share sound. I got it. Are you getting it? Yeah, but you should stop it and start it again, I think. Okay. That's Thank you. 
Yes, that yeah. is David. That is David singing. Okay. Yeah. That's his voice. And I'm trying to think. It's so, uh, it's so like kind of right. It sounds like it should have been on the radio, right? Like, I, mean, I, yeah. I don't know what happened because they were being promoted by Clot by Arista Records and Right. Something happened to, to screw it up, you know? Right. Because I keep, like, when I hear it, I'm like, oh, that sounds like somebody I recognize, right? But it's not exactly. It's like a mix of other things that were going on at the time. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, I've got another one. I'll see if I can see if this one will hit. Let me, uh. Let me pull up this other track. The deepest thing. Let me open it up with my uh, the right program. Okay, let me do a share on my end here. So I'm sure David's really happy that we're just playing his music. Yeah. During this session. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, see if you can hear this. Back to front, round the bend. I can't see nothing. I'm going back again. I'm chasing sunlight.
Thanks, Ethan. Pretty incredible. <laughs> okay, so the album title is Stung by the Gods. If, uh, I, think that's I don't the know group whether. Name. I think that's the, the band name. Oh, that's the name of the group? Yeah. It could be. Maybe they, it was a self titled album, too. Um, but yeah, pretty awesome stuff. All right, well, maybe. Uh, Maybe I'll kind of let David have the last word on that today, I suppose. That was pretty, it's pretty great to enjoy that with everyone here. Um, is there, is there any, anything anybody wants to add before we, we sign off for the day? I really appreciate you jumping in and, and, and uh, chatting, Carl and, and uh, David Skolnick and Alan. Should we, uh, should we call it, should we call it a session for today? All right. Cool. Well, thank you, David Anderson and everyone else here for, for being present and having a great session. And we'll, uh, we'll catch you all next week. It'll be great to see you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for giving us an hour of your time. Remember that you can catch us live online every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's right. Go to pianotechradio.com to register so you can interact live and ask questions of our guests. See you next week.